Benedict, uh, what's uh, happening where you are right now? Well, people are walking and uh, finishing some of them their picnics, but now they've decided they're going to have another beverage, uh, perhaps tea, perhaps something else. I've been speaking to some people and uh, a gentleman called Edward uh, started uh, talking to me and I said he said he'd been here before and I said, did you enjoy today? And he said, yes, I did. And then with a big smile, he said, well, what I saw of it, because there are just so many thousands of people, it was difficult for him uh, to get a proper glimpse uh, of the Queen and of, of the royals. Uh, but he said it was much better in 1953. 1953? Well, of course, that was the coronation, and he was here. So I ventured to ask him how old he was then, and I promised I wouldn't do the maths. And he told me he was 11. 11 years old. So uh, all kinds of people coming here. Oh, and by the way, when I continued talking to him, it turns out that he was a fellow journalist and had been an editor at the BBC. I certainly didn't know that when I started speaking to him. So people from all nationalities, all ages, and just smiles everywhere. Uh, so when the Queen, in her message today, uh, talks about, uh, well, thanking people, communities across the United Kingdom, across the Commonwealth, uh, for the affection the respect, the help that they have given the United Kingdom, that they have supported her, prayed for her, for example. Uh, she then says, I know that many happy memories will be created uh, at these festive occasions and that it's important to look back at the 70 years and reflect on what has been achieved and what changes there have been. Uh, just so many. Just recently she inaugurated here in London uh, Four years late, it has to be said, but um, a new tube line called the Elizabeth Line, also called Crossrail. Um, and, of course, she's had those 14 prime ministers, uh, met so many American presidents, but many people here looking at her, and as we were just hearing from one of those clips there, she is by many considered to be the mother, the grandmother, the great-grandmother of the nation, and she is held in great affection and with great respect, not just by other heads of state uh, across the, UK, the world, the Europe, the world, the Commonwealth, but I think people are reflecting and realising how important and unifying she is. And she always looks to the future because she is positive. So I think a lot of people are creating happy memories right here in St James's Park and up and down the United Kingdom. And they the certainly are. They certainly are. The two uh, naughty little girls standing behind you making some <laughs> happy memories of their own just a moment ago. Um, they've gone now, don't worry. They've gone. Um, lots of discussion, Benedict. Not about... worrying, it's all part of the fun. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'd be doing the same. Um, lots of discussion about, you know, people who, who was actually on the balcony of Buckingham Palace with the Queen. But perhaps there was as much discussion about who wasn't on the balcony of Buckingham Palace today. Absolutely, you're spot on. Um, absolutely, and who wasn't on the balcony? Well, Harry and Meghan were not. They've flown over from the United States. They were on another balcony, but not the balcony. So they were not on the balcony of Buckingham Palace, the one that really matters. Why? Because the head of state, the monarch, at 96 years old, having lost her husband last year, um, having had all kinds of disappointments, not just joys throughout her reign, within her own family, uh, believes very much that it is working royals uh, who need to be on that balcony. And of course, her heir to the throne is a working royal, Prince Charles. Um, uh, Prince Charles's son, future heir, is a working royal, his wife, uh, Catherine, also. Um, and it's all about, well, for example, not having Prince Andrew, we know why that is. And apparently that's been a very painful, difficult decision for the Queen. But that was the way to do it, to say it's working royals. And I think we might catch a glimpse of Prince Andrew at St Paul's Cathedral uh, tomorrow. But of course people are talking about that. Um, but it's not the main focus. The main focus is that nothing should overshadow this remarkable woman, the... Um, I think we can say now the most famous woman on the planet who it is felt a lot by many, many people across this nation and across other nations has behaved with great dignity. And when she vowed on inheriting the crown from her father when he died that she would do her very best. I think the 
the majority of people, whether they're Republicans, whether they are monarchists or not, acknowledge that she has done that. Then the big question mark comes about uh, the longest waiting heir to the throne, Prince Charles, and the difficult transition, which has already begun, but when his mother goes. Uh, that operation is called London Bridge, and um, I think many people hope that that day won't come and the Queen's death won't come for a long time because it is recognised she is absolutely a unifying factor and has led a life of service and the nation is grateful. OK, well, thank you very much indeed for that update from central London. Prosecutor Force Benedict Pavio, thank you so much.